This is your ultimate guide to Grand Theft Auto Online, whether you are a brand new player and you don't know what to do, or whether you're an experienced player and you're still struggling to make money. This is a series that I call From the Ditch to Filthy Rich, and this is my version of a Rags to Riches series. I started as a level one in the middle of 2024, and over five episodes, have acquired everything I need to make over a million dollars per hour every single time I log in. And if you followed along with your character, you will have too. If you haven't, go back to episode one. Watch and follow along, do everything I did, and you'll be at the point now where you can buy absolutely anything you want in this game. But what do you spend your money on? There is so much in this game to buy. In this video, I'm, not, I'm going to show you the things that I would recommend you buy first that are going to make your grind easier, going to make your grind faster, and then you can go buy the things that are considered an absolute waste of money that are in the game just to have a bit of fun with. So in this, in this video, let's jump right into it. I'm going to show you what you should be buying, what my recommendations are that you should be buying. Let's go. Before we jump into the things that we should be buying, I want to show you the three treasure hunts that you can do in this game, which I meant to include during the five episodes we've done already. But one of them you need to get an email from, and that never happened during my grind, so I wasn't able to include that in the series, so I wanted to do all three at once. But basically, the first one you need to do is that you need to go find five clues. The first clue is located here. You see it's a red blood handprint on a door. And I'll just show you quickly on the map where it's located. So it's just up here at Polito Bay, just north of the cable car. The second clue is located up here at Grapeseed. And it's just machete into the side of the barn here. Just walk up to press right on your D-pad to examine it. Clue number three is going to be located over here at the airstrip in Sandy Shores. And we're looking for a severed hand. It's going to be near this garbage bag just here. So press right on your D-pad. And that's not a great angle. I can't really show you that there, can I? Hold on, let me um, come around the side here and I'll show you. So there, you can see it there on the ground. Let me just get out the sniper and I'll just uh, give a quick zoom in to show you. So there it is there. So look, when you walk up close to it, you'll get the prompt to press right anyway. Clue number four is located here at Great Chaparral. And again, just got to walk around. We're looking for this sign here. Can you find me? Just walk up to it again, press right on your D-pad. Now for clue number five, there are a few different locations that it could be. So I recommend looking at gtaweb.eu. I'll link that down below. To go, for, you can get on there and find out where these possible locations are. So the first possible location is located here, um, just to the south there of the airbase, uh, Fort Zancudo. You're looking for a black van, so just have a look around the area. If you can't see it, it's probably not here. So then move on to the next one, which is located up here at Ratton Canyon. And again, just have a look around. Can you, if you can't see the black van, it's not located there. The third location, here it is here for me is located uh, just to the to the west, to the east of um, Polito Bay near Mount Gordo area. So you just come up to the van, press right on your D-pad and the other two locations, I'll show the map here so you can see where they're located. Uh, you just got to go to each one until you see the van. It might be, might be the first one you check, it might be the fifth one you check. It's just, it's just completely random which one it is. Then you're going to get this text from a slasher. It reads, I'm sick of you sticking your nose where it doesn't belong. Now, I'm not going to lie, what happens to you next won't be nice for you. Now, the slasher is going to come after you in an open area at night time. So, I recommend driving out to Sandy Shores there, you're climbing onto the roof of a car, and you'll hear the footsteps coming. Like, I was standing on this car for about five seconds, no word of a lie, and I heard the footsteps coming. I was wearing my headset at the time, which helped. But now, I've acquired the Navy Revolver and $500,000. So after you get the Navy Revolver, you're going to need to get 50 kills with this weapon. And it doesn't matter whether it's on NPCs or whether it's on players. So I just went and robbed the store, got the police after me, shot a heap of them. And they killed me before I got that 50th kill. So I just grabbed this guy out of his uh, truck and shot him. You can see there I'm now credited with $200,000, as well as an exclusive weapon that is available to me now in Red Dead Redemption Online. The next treasure hunt you can do is bounties through Maud Eccles. And I'm not talking about the brand new bounty office that's been released in the game. I'm talking about just typical bounties, that you, similar to what you do with Trevor in story mode. If you come up here to the to Maud's location, you're going to receive this text from her, where she's, she said she's going to send you a file very shortly, talking about a bounty. Once you receive that email, you're going to have a location on your map highlighted by a yellow circle. Head inside that yellow circle and you need to look for the bounty. It can be absolutely anywhere within that circle, so just have a look around. You walk up, kill him. One, or if you kill him, it's going to pay you $5,000. Uh, 
You can, however, subdue him and take him back to Maud. You get $10,000. But if you're doing this for speed like I am, just kill him. It's so much quicker. The next one I got located down here. This one took a little while to find. Here he is here. Again, I just killed him. Now, if you haven't done the um, 50 kills for the Navy Revolver yet, if you got that before you started this, then you can, you can kill these guys with a Navy Revolver if you want. And that'll make that a little bit quicker in getting the 50 kills knocked off because you've got to kill these guys anyway. Unless you actually want to take them back. I mean, it is a long drive back. It's up to you. Do what you will. For me, it was um, a no-brainer just to kill them. My third one was located here at the hippie camp up near Polito Bay. Is it a hippie camp? Whatever they are. She took a while to kill. Go down. Stay down. Stay down. See, she's subdued there. I could have taken her back. But... Again, I want to kill them too, because it, it's just quicker. I'm doing this for speed, not for the money. An extra $5,000, to me, it is not worth driving them back for that extra $5,000, not when there's uh, so many other ways to make money. After you kill the last one, you're going to get a text from Maud telling you about a stash left over from the last killer, and it'll pop up on your map, located as a uh, little gold treasure box. So head over to the location where it is on your map. For me, it was up here at Polito Bay. Walk up to the little treasure box here, press right on your D-pad, and you will now pick up the uh, stone hatchet. And like, likewise with the uh, Navy revolver, there is going to be a kill challenge for this one, which we need to kill a certain amount of people, and we will receive a bonus payout for it. Now, I thought you had to kill 50 people with this stone hatchet, but I got this notification popping up after 10, saying that I've been credited $250,000 and have an exclusive weapon available in Red Dead Redemption 2. I didn't even notice this had popped up, so I just kept killing people. Anyway, look, onto the third treasure hunt now. This one was the reason why I didn't do these earlier, because to trigger this one, you have to get this email pop up. And it is completely random when this email comes, and I didn't get it. I had to actually get into the game and just go AFK, hoping it would pop up for me, and it did. So here we go. So you go up to this location here, and if you get this particular spot, it's going to be right here on this pole. So this is located here. I believe these locations are completely random as to where where it's going to be, but if you get this particular one, it's this spot here. So press right on your D-pad, you examine, examine the clue, press circle if you're on PlayStation when you're ready to leave, and move on to the next one. The next one for me is located up here, and I believe this is going to be a cave. Yes, as you can see, there's just a cave here. I mean, doing this at night time isn't helping with the recording, is it, to be able to see what we're doing? But looking for this cave here, to head inside, there's going to be a dead body inside here. Just walk up to it and press right on your D-pad to examine the clue. And time to move on to the next one. The next one for me is located over here at Sandy Shores. So we're looking for this old run-down, rotting away, I'm guessing it's a former boat shed or something, is it? I don't know. But just come inside here, there's a, a shovel on the ground here, you press right on your D-pad to examine the clue, and then we move on to the next one. So we're looking for this tree here at Grapeseed, and just walk up, there's going to be a treasure box underneath, uh, looks like there was a, a revolver or something inside it here. Not there now, but don't worry, this was the last location we need. Now popping up on the map here is another treasure box icon. So we'll head over here and we will collect our treasure. Head over to the location. We're going to see two dead bodies on the ground as well as a little treasure chest. Walk over to the chest here, press right on your D-pad and we'll go through an animation cutscene of your character opening the box and collecting the double action revolver. Now same as the previous two treasure hunts, this Double Action Revolver is going to have a, uh, a kill challenge that we're going to need to complete. And I think, it, you, I think, I thought it was 50 headshots. Now I only did, again, I only did 10 headshots with this and I received the bonus. I think they, I don't know whether they changed it or not, but I swear it used to be 50 headshots. Anyway, to do this one, I just went to the nearest store. Shot the clerk in the head, shot the customer here running away in the head, waited for the cops to come after me and just started shooting everybody in the head. So once again, it does need to be headshots. You can't just kill with body shots. It needs to be headshots. And you can see once you complete the challenge there, you now have an exclusive weapon unlocked for Red Dead Redemption 2 once again and $250,000 credited to our bank account. 
Now, two things I want to show you very quickly. If a blue dot pops up on your map and it says it's a guard, head up to him, press right on your D-pad. This is going to pick up a key for you that will unlock a drawer inside a Ruby, or a Rubio's office when you're doing the finale of the Caprico heist. And this will give you an exclusive weapon. So next time you do that, go and unlock that one. The last thing I want to show you is the street dealers. You can find them on gtaweb.eu. There are three each day. They change locations. You can walk up to them, press right on your D-pad, and you can sell your stuff from your lockup or your lab. And that way, you empty that product out. You don't have to go through the sell mission, and um, you're not going to risk getting raided. Okay, so now let's jump into my recommendations for things that you should be buying. Now you have millions and millions of dollars. There is a lot of things in this video I'm going to recommend that you buy once you've got lots of money coming in. None of them are going to be in any particular order, except for this one. I'm highly going to recommend you get this one first, if you're going to be grinding out the Cayo Perico heist a lot. Now what you need to do first is open up your phone, come up to Money and Services, come down to Dynasty 8, enter the site. You want to filter out for offices. We're going to need to buy an office, but it's not so much for the office itself. It's what we need the office for. Now, if you have the Criminal Enterprises starter pack like I do on my main account, Maze Bank West will be for free. If not, it'll be a million dollars. You've got Long Bank West here for 3.1 million. You've got the Arcadia Centre here for 2.5. Or you've got the Maze Bank, which I own, which is $4 million. From time to time, these do come on sale. So like I said, always check out the... Um, we could up that video. I said that in my last video. Don't buy anything on a Tuesday or a Wednesday. It may come on sale. Okay, so the reason you want the office is not so much for the office itself, but there are, there's one item that we need to buy that we need to have an office for. So come into your computer here, log in. I'm talking about the vehicle cargo warehouse. If we open up the map here, come up to all. These are all the vehicle cargo warehouses you can own. The one here at La Mesa is the one that I own. It is the cheapest and, in my opinion, is the best location if you're going to run this business. Now, I have a separate guide on how the vehicle warehouse works, and I will link that down below. Now, we aren't actually buying this business for the business itself either. We are buying this business for what can be stored inside. It is the only place that this particular vehicle can be stored. So we need to buy an office so we can buy a vehicle warehouse so we can store this particular vehicle. Now I can't remember off the top of my head how much this one is. I think it's around the 1.5, 1.6 million dollar mark. Let's just have a look at some of the others. 2 million, 1.6, 2.8, 2.4, 2 2.6. I think it's going to be around the 2, 2.5 million mark from memory. I can't remember off the top of my head, but it... It is the cheapest, I believe. Hang on, if that's one's 1 1.6, then that one's got to be cheaper, doesn't it? 1 1.9, 2.4, 2.7, 2.3, 2.1. Yeah, look, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure La Mesa is the cheapest. And I show in my video why I recommend to buy that one. It's just right on the highway here. A lot of your cell missions bring you up around the, the uh, top area here of the city, some even up further, up into this area. There's, was there, there's a vineyard here somewhere that one of the soil missions takes you to. So being, being nice and close to the freeway here helps with the soil missions. Now as we back out, I will open up my phone again. This time we go into War Stock Cash and Carry. And we scroll down until we find... It's quite a long way down the list. The Phantom Wedge. If you have the trade price unlocked, it will be $1.9 million. I can't remember how much it is without the trade price. If you want to get the trade price for it, you do need to log back into the computer of your office, and you will need to do the uh, Special Vehicle Mission. Let's log in. Special Vehicle Work here and you will need to launch this particular mission here. Now, you will need one other person to complete that mission with, so I'll leave that totally up to you. I did do this on last year's from the Ditched Filthy Rich series when I bought the Phantom Wedge on that series. I did this mission with a random. It was a bit of a pain. It did take about 20, 25 minutes, but I did unlock it for, for the sale price of $1.9 million. Um, I will need to log into my other account to check how much it is. I'm not going to do that right now is uh, I'm going to show you how this vehicle works, uh, why I recommend purchasing this vehicle. 
When doing the um, vehicle approach, the long fin, if you land nice and close, whoops, nice and close to the police station, not too close though, come into special vehicle request here in your interaction menu, request the phantom wedge, this will spawn in right beside you. There it is there. And this makes uh, just getting the long fin that much faster. Now we don't have to drive to the other side of the map and pick up a truck. And Pavel's dialogue will actually acknowledge the fact that you have a truck specially designed for stealing the boat trailer here. And I've made a mess of this, haven't I? Oh, here we go. Maybe not. Okay. <coughs> that wasn't as clean as I normally do it, but you still get the idea that sporting the truck in nice and close to you like that makes it that much easier. And again, just once you're a distance away from the police station, hop out, blow yourself up to lose the cops. And you can see there now, wanted level is gone. Pavel never shuts up. I'm trying to talk to you guys. Maybe I should turn the dialogue off when I'm... Can, is that possible? When I'm recording these videos, I can turn the dialogue off. Anyway, as you can see, I've lost the wanted level, so now I just drive this to the docks. And if I was doing this by going to source one of the other trucks, I'd probably... I'd probably be in the truck driving to the police station now, like on the other side of the bloody city, so... Just shows how this is so much better so if you if, if, if you're going to be doing the ko perico heist a lot which i'd recommend you do it's the fastest way to make a million dollars particularly if you've only got an hour to play let's say you've just um for your younger ones you've just got home from school you want to have a game before dinner or something or your older ones like me who, are, who have work if you get home from work and you want to have a quick game ko perico heist is the way to go to to get yourself to earn a million dollars as quick as possible so you're going to be probably doing this heist a lot if you want money. So yeah, the very first purchase I recommend is get the CEO office. Some of you would have already got it, as I said in my previous video, if you have it for free to pick it up. Then pick up the vehicle warehouse. And again, if you want to run that business, I do have the guide, which I will link below. It's not a bad business. It's quite fun to operate, actually. So check that video out if you're interested in how the vehicle warehouse works. And then once you have the office, then the vehicle warehouse, you have a place you can store this vehicle so you can purchase it and just make this particular setup. It's almost three times as fast when you have your own Phantom Wedge you can spawn in right beside you. Another thing you want to purchase is the Vigilante, particularly help in the Dr. J contract. This is the, uh, uh, the High Society leak. Using the power boost here, I can just jump into the army base this way rather than driving all the way around and risking getting blown up by the enemy. And not want to land on my roof like that. And then from here, just drive into the hangar like I did before. But this isn't the only mission with the Dr. Dre contract that you can use the Vigilante for, and I'll show you that one right now. In the mission Don't F with Dre, I like to park Dre's car just here Call my mechanic and request in the vigilante. That should spawn in behind me. There it is. Go to the lock on missiles. Now this vehicle, the reason I like to use this one here is it has some of the most aggressive tracking missiles in the entire game. So you lock onto your targets here, just start firing. Get some vehicles coming in at the back here. Look at the, see the tracking on that one there, taking out that NPC on foot. And that one there to the left. Just absolutely amazing. This makes light work of this mission. And for the most part you are protected in here. You just see how aggressively that is tracking. This particular mission is a closed session mission. So that's another reason, like this is the only vehicle with uh, lock-on missiles that you can use in a closed session. 
You used to be able to use the Toreador, and that would have been on this list instead of the Vigilante, because the Toreador is um, a four-seater, and both vehicles have the rocket boost. Hold on, let me show you. So by pressing your horn, it has that rocket boost. So that's why I highly recommend using this vehicle. Something else I recommend for you to buy once you've got a bit of money is an arcade. How do you purchase one of these? We'll come into your phone, money and services, maze bank foreclosures, enter the site, come up and filter out for arcades. And you'll see here we've got four down around the city and I'm pretty sure there's two up north. Yeah, one in Graveseed and one in Polito Bay. I recommend staying away from those two. If you're going to be using this one for the Diamond Casino Heist, this one here, the La Mesa Video Geddon, is not a bad one because it's right near the casino. However, I have the 8-bit at Vinewood because all of my other businesses are up around the top here. Uh, this is the most expensive one, I believe. So that's what I go for. Come in here and let's back out, actually, because I own that one. I can't show you, I don't think. Let's come into this one here. So, style is completely cosmetic, mural cosmetic, floor cosmetic, the um, neon art is cosmetic, extras here, personal quarters, highly recommend grabbing one of these, $150,000 you can spawn here, high screens aren't absolutely necessary, and the ga garage, which I do own, is optional as well, and I can't show you how much that one costs, unfortunately, but if you purchase this, it gives you a 10 car garage inside. Now... Uh, to unlock this on the website first, open up my map, it's not going to show on my map, but just here, roughly about here, there will be an H on your map. You need to go there, that will activate a phone call from Leicester. You'll then be told to come over here to Mirror Park, which will activate a cutscene telling you all about the Diamond Casino Heist. Once you've done that, it will unlock on the website for you to purchase. Now there are a couple of ways to make money with the arcade. You can see here that I have my arcade fully decked out with gaming machines and there is a different gaming machine in each slot this does cost a lot of money up front how you purchase these is you come up to your laptop here in your office sit down log in you will need to be registered as a CEO or an MC club president and just in here are all of the ones you can purchase. And if you don't own it, it will say purchase. You can click on it and it will tell you how much they are. Uh, you can scroll down. What you want to do is Monkey's Paradise. This one is only $90,000. So you want to purchase this one first. And I'm just going to log into my last year's Ditch to Filthy Rich series character so I can show you why you want to purchase this one. So I'll be back in a moment. So when you first got your arcade set up, you're going to have these four machines here. This is the Gang War Edition. You're going to have these here for free, pretty much, uh, once you've set up your arcade. What I recommend doing is, after you purchase the Monkey's Paradise, open up your interaction, ma interaction menu, come to Arcade Management, come down to Arcade Games, and come down to Monkey's Paradise. Press your X button if you're on uh, PlayStation, then R1, and whatever your equivalent, bu equivalent button is on the other platforms. Scroll down here, Monkey's Paradise. X. Move across, Monkey's Paradise, press X, and just do this for every single slot. As you can see me doing here, just moving across, putting them in. Where are we? It's all the way down there. Yep, there we go. So just do this every single slot. It's not going to look great. It's going to look rather plain and boring, in fact. But here we go. A couple more to go. Now, with these ones here, even though you've got them here, I recommend changing out to Monkey's Paradise because there are two slots here that we can put Monkey's Paradise on. Oh, we can do it without that there. Okay. If you want to leave Street Crimes there, do it. That gives you something else to play if you want to play these games in here for now. Let's come across Monkey's Paradise again. Monkey's Paradise. Monkey's Paradise, Monkey's Paradise, Monkey's Paradise, Monkey's Paradise, nearly there. Couple more spots to go. So, uh, how's it going? Did I miss one? Oh no. There we go. So we've got Monkey's Paradise now in every single slot, except for these four here, <laughs> which we've got the Gang Wars game. And as we come out, 
yeah, it doesn't look too great, does it? But what this does is you've only spent $90,000 extra and now you're going to get money going into your wall safe. The maximum amount you can get into your wall safe. And I'll sort of switch back into my other character and we'll talk about that now. So whether you fill your warehouse completely with Monkey's Paradise or whether you spend, I think it was $4.5 million like I did once you've got lots of money and put a different arcade in every slot, doesn't matter. But for you lower for your lower levels without much money, I recommend just buying Monkey's Paradise and doing it that way first. The wall safe here, every 48 minutes you're going to get $5,000 coming in. It doesn't sound like much, but after a while it does add up. And how much have I got in there now? So I've got $25,000 in there now. If I log in to the laptop, it does tell me exactly how much I've earned just through the wall safe there. So you can see there, $11 million. $11 million I have earned through the wall safe in my arcade. $5,000 every 48 minutes. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it adds up. Now, the other thing here on your laptop, if you come to upgrades, you can see here a drone station. This is something I suggest you get maybe when you've got lots of money. It's not something that's necessary. That is an optional thing that when you've got lots of money, you don't know what to spend it on. You can buy this one. What I do recommend here is the master control terminal. And I cannot remember off the top of my head how much this one is, but it is worth the investment, and I'll show you why once we head downstairs. So if you come down into the basement of your arcade, just here is your master control terminal. Effectively what this is, is it is a supercomputer linking all of your businesses in the game. So you log in here, and I can access my nightclub. And you can see that my popularity, popularity is down a bit, so I can come to Resident DJ... I can swap it over a couple of times, back out, come back in, and you can see now my popularity is all the way full, and I'm now getting again the $50,000 every, every in-game day. I can also come and check the warehouse management, I can move around my technicians if I need to. Let's have a look at here, in fact I do need to move, I'm still under the 160, I remember I said in the nightclub guide video, about having uh, between 90 and 180 crates to get the custom mule if you purchase the custom mule. This account I purchased the custom mule on. You can see I've got one, two, three products completely full. Well, I've already moved, because I do own all seven of the businesses here. I've already moved one technician over to organic, organic produce. What I will do now is I will move pharmaceutical research, that's full. I'll move him over to printing and copying so that that way... Printing and copying, printing and copying will start to fill up now. I need to get it over that 180, so I get the pound of custom when I go to sell instead of that horrible custom mule. I also didn't mention Tony takes 100, uh, takes 10% cut when you're selling, up to $100,000. So if you're selling less than a million, he's going to take 10%. If you're selling over a million, he's only going to take 100,000 because that's the maximum he's going to take. So another reason I like to wait till it's over. Not, not just so I don't get the custom mule, it's so that I maximise the amount of profit I get from here. So back out, come here, I can come in and see my bunker. And in fact, I'm going to grab some more supplies there. So $75,000, purchase that. Back out. Now, I do need to hop off the computer. I'm registered as a CEO at the moment, because here are my MC businesses. So my lockup, counterfeit cash, grass farm, lab, and document forgery office. I don't run these normally. I have got some stock in the lab because I wanted to test out the new timer on this one. I'll have a video about showing that later. Uh, I haven't got around to recording that one yet. Uh, but to access any of these, I do need to hop off the computer, retire as a CEO, and then register as an MC president. But then I can come in, if I am running these, I can come into any one of these and purchase supplies. Down here, the vehicle warehouse. I can come in here and I can source a vehicle from here if I choose to. I can come into my crate warehouses. This is something I'll talk about a little bit later on in this video. You can see I own five, la five large warehouses all down here, and I'll talk about this one a bit later on, but I can come here and I can buy supplies, source supplies from here. Can't buy them from here, I can source them from here. And my hangar, which is currently full, 50 medical supplies. I'm waiting for this one to go double money. But I can launch a source mission from here if my cargo isn't full. So that's why I recommend getting an arcade. 
can get the master control terminal. You can operate all your business from here. You don't have to run to each. If you're running all of these businesses, you don't have to go to each one, particularly the ones that are passive here, the uh, bunker, all your RMC businesses where you can just buy supplies from. Rather than go to each one, there's six different ones there, and then your nightclub as well uh, doing your popularity. You can do them all from this one computer. And the final reason I recommend getting a arcade is if you've got a friend who can help out, the Diamond Casino heist is one of the most fun heists in the entire game, in my opinion. I love doing this one. The best part about it is you can do all the setups solo. You don't need any help for the, so for the setups. And even if you don't have a friend, nine times out of ten, if you jump into a public lobby and then go to launch the finale, you will find people willing to help you with the finale. And you can do it with just two of you. I recommend trying to find a higher level. Higher levels tend to know what they're doing, and they're quite happy to take only 15 or 20% of the cut because they haven't helped you with the setups. Don't rely on low levels to help you. They'll want a bigger cut, and they won't know what they're doing. Uh, and I'll have guides on how to do the three separate approaches. Silent and Sneaky, the Big Kong, Big Con, where I've got Kong from, I've got King Kong on my mind. The, um, the Silent and Sneaky, the Big Con, and aggressive and I recommend playing through each one once but then once you've done that jump between silent and sneaky and the big con never ever do aggressive again once you've done it the once and jumping between the two if you run a big con then you do silent and sneaky and then you do big con again big con's going to be on um, hard difficulty and you're going to get that little bit of extra payout that's why I recommend picking up the arcade well worth investment in my opinion the next thing I'm going to recommend to buy is an auto shop. Now, if you've been to the LS Car Meet and paid the membership, like I suggested way back in episode one of this series, I think it was, open up your phone, you will have auto shops unlocked. Come into Money and Services, Maze Bank foreclosures. Come up to auto shops, and here are the auto shops we can buy. There are five located in the city, and I think that's it. They're all in the city. Okay, I own the one up here at Burton. That is the one I recommend for anyone who has businesses around this area like I do. However, you know, these ones down here aren't so bad either. Mission Row, if you own the Mission Row nightclub, that's not a bad one because it's nice and close to that as well. La Mesa. Uh, Strawberry, I'd probably recommend staying away from Rancho. That's the first one I owned. It is the further south. The others aren't in too bad a location. But as we come in... Style, tint, and emblem are cosmetic. Don't bother with any of those unless you've got lots of money. Staff, if you've got lots of money, I do recommend picking up both staff members. That's going to set you back an additional $770,000. Extras, definitely buy a personal quarters. And if you can afford both staff members, make sure that you can afford the lift as well. The lift's going to be an additional $650,000. So total there, we're looking at an additional $1.5 Hang on, my maths is terrible here. <laughs> We're looking at an additional almost $1.7 million on top of the, of the cost here to get the personal quarters, the car lift, and the two staff members. So just make sure you can afford that before doing this. Now, how you make money with this business is if you've got the car lifts, and you can see here I've got two of them, one over here, one over here. I've got a guide on how the auto shop works. I will link that down below. But basically, you just walk up to these vehicles, press right on your D-pad. You get to modify these vehicles. The customer will tell you how it wants, how he wants it customised down the bottom. Once it's customised, you can either deliver it yourself or it's where the two staff members come in. So one over here and the other one over here. If you choose to get them to deliver it, they will do that passively for you, but they do risk crashing the car. And every little bit of damage done to the car is a loss of profit to you. They're not as bad as they used to be. They used to crash every single time. However, Rockstar did buff it a bit not too long ago, and they don't crash as much anymore. If you're doing your career progress on this one, if you're on PS5 or Xbox Series X and S, come into Recreation or Santos Tuners, and where are we here? Earn $5 million delivering customer vehicles is one of the ones you need to tick off. That is you delivering them, not paying the staff. So bear that one in mind. Another great thing about this business is over here, it comes with a 10-car gar garage. A lot of businesses, you've got to purchase the garage upgrade, not this one. It comes with its stock standard. And you can store up to 10 vehicles in here. And the best part about this being an auto shop, any vehicle stored in here, hop in, press right on my D-pad, you can customise it in here. This is like your own personal LS Customs. And if you're a low level, 
everything is unlocked. If we come down to, I have everything unlocked anyway. If we come down to respray, come into metallics. There's one in particular here. I can't remember which one it is. I think come down. You can see I've got them all unlocked. Lime green, I think it might be. Lime green has something absolutely ridiculous that you need to unlock to be able to purchase this at LS Customs. If you're a level one and you have enough money to purchase this, I don't know how you're going to do that unless you've done a glitch to allow you to get a couple of million dollars, but my point is, no matter what level you are, you bring a vehicle into your auto shop, a personal vehicle, everything's unlocked. The lime green here, which had something ridiculous that I had to do to unlock it for, for my main character, I can't even remember what it was, it's unlocked, everything's unlocked, absolutely everything. Come into transmission, all your transmission's unlocked, your turbo's unlocked. Everything. Your armor. Pl armor's all upgrades. Like, what is it? 20% 20, 20 of things the first one unlocked as a low level. you got to unlock these as you progress. 100% unlocked. Engine. Tunes. Level 4 is unlocked. No matter what level you are, coming in here, everything is unlocked. So that's why I highly recommend picking up an auto shop. If you're a car guy, if you want to customize cars, which once you've got lots of money, you're going to want to do that. I mean, I'm going to have a garage tour coming up soon. Um, I'm just working away on a few more career progresses before I um, go ahead and do that. But I'm going to do a video on a garage tour soon so you can see all the cars I do have and the way I've customised each different one. But everything unlocked as a low level, that saves you so much time going out and doing some of the ridiculous things you have to do, like X amount of slipstreams in a race, X amount of turbo boosts off the start in races. They're just ridiculous. And you don't need to worry about that if you bring them in here. Now, the other way to make money is with the contracts over here, which are like mini heists. And again, I've got a video showing how to do the best one, which is the union depository contract. This one nets you $300,000 minus JD and Susanna's cut. And it takes around about 20 minutes to do. So I'll link a guide on how to do that as well. And how to, you can see it's not on the board here. There are eight different contracts. Only three show up. So I've also got a guide on, on showing how to get the union depository contract every single time if it's not showing up on here. So let's move on to the next one. The next thing I recommend getting is armoured vehicles. And I have three separate ones that I'm going to recommend. Obviously we have the Duke of Death already. But as you've seen in a couple of my videos where I took on missions with that. There are a few holes where NPCs can shoot through and get you. And I did die a couple of times. With the armoured Karuma however, which is what you see me driving here now. You can see I've got the police on me here. They are absolutely unloading into me, and they aren't killing me. I've got, I've lost no health whatsoever. Let's move in a bit closer here. And I'm just going to let them continue to shoot me. Come on, guys, shoot at me. There you go. You can see they are completely unloading. I am completely protected by bullets from NPCs in this car. This really helps out with missions. Particularly missions where you can't use a um, use the vigilante, for example. Yeah, I can see they just lost a tiny bit of health. So sometimes they do get through, but nowhere near as much as the Duke of Death. The downside of this armored Karuma is it does not take any explosive whatsoever. One sticky bomb, one rocket, it's going to blow up. So using this against um, other players, you're not going to have a good time. If they pull out their rail gun. Uh, throw a sticky bomb at you, an RPG, you're going to blow up, you're going to die straight away. But against bullets, look at this, they have absolutely unloaded on me. I've only lost a tiny bit of health there. I'm not even moving. So this just shows, this vehicle, you are completely protected. And if you've got this vehicle, doing any missions, like, it really helps out a lot. Another option for an armoured vehicle is the Insurgent Pickup Custom. Now this one does work better if you have a player who can help you because you can see on top there there is a mounted machine gun. Now that is for a friend who can hop in and they can use this one to help protect you. This one does have... So I just dropped the mine there though. So let me come in. Ah, where are we going? Try and find a car here that's going to run over it. Here we go. You can see there, it blows up the vehicle with the mine. So this helps when you've got ground vehicles after you. You can drop the mines, that blows them up. Now to purchase this one, 
you do need to own another vehicle on the list which I will mention after we finish talking about all our armoured vehicles so to customise this one you do need to do that uh, but to own it come in to Warstock Cash and Carry and you want to scroll down and we are looking for I don't remember which one it came out with. The Insurgent Pickup. You need to purchase this one for $1.35 million. Then once you own this one, you need to take it into either the Avenger or the MOC with the Vehicle Workshop and you can upgrade it to the Insurgent Pickup Custom. Now the MOC or the Avenger is going to be on this list a bit later on, so spoiler alert. We'll talk about that next after we talked about the next armoured vehicle you want to buy, which is here. The night, the night shark, and again, this one can be customised inside either the MOC or the Avenger Special Vehicle Workshop. Now, before we actually get the night shark and show you, this vehicle can take a few rockets. I can't remember off the top of my head how many. Let's let's have a look. I'll test for you right now. It took five rockets. It took four rockets to blow up. So there we go. The next one we want to talk about is the Night Shark. Now this one has uh, front mounted machine guns, although they're not that great. If we look here, lock onto the police car here. It does take a while to blow it up. You can see there, not too bad. I don't think I can get uh, mine drops with this one though. And the worst thing about this, so you can see I've got the full armour plating there. While I am protected from bullets, mostly, not as much as the um, armoured Karuma, when I've got the full armour plating on here, I can't shoot out of this vehicle. You can see I'm trying to press the switch um, weapons button, but I'm just stuck with the front mounted machine guns and that's it. That one took four RPGs to blow up as well. Homing missiles, I believe they take a lot more homing missiles than they do um, RPGs. So if you've got oppressors chasing after you, you're going to survive a little bit more than the four rockets there. So look, an armoured vehicle is definitely something you're going to want, whether it's the Night Shark, the Insurgent Pickup Custom, or the Armoured Karuma, or like me, all, th all three, I'll leave that one up to you. So something else you're going to want to buy is come into Warstock Cash and Carry. If you own a bunker, which if you followed my series, you should, you want either a mobile, oper mobile operations centre or you're going to want an Avenger if you own the hangar. Now, previously, before the San Andreas Mercenaries DLC was released back in 2023, the only place to store the Avenger was in the facility. So, I don't know whether you still have to have the facility to buy it, buy it first. But you can store it in your hangar. And that's something I'm going to have to test out. Probably check that out on my um, newest from the Ditched Filthy Rich series character. And I'll let you know. Because um, right now I'm on my main character. And I own both the hangar and the facility. Uh, you can store the Avenger in your hangar. But I don't know if you need to own the facility first to buy it. The facility is of course a business I'm not going to be talking much about in this video. I do have a guide on how the facility works, how to make money or that. I'll link that down below anyway, but I'm not going to recommend that as something you need to buy. That's something you can buy if you want when you've got lots of money and you want to test out the Doomsday Heist, because they are a bit of fun. But I'm not mentioning that as a recommendation for you to buy. Uh, so I would just go ahead and buy the Mobile Operations Centre. Now what you want to do is you can pick either the Phantom or the hauler doesn't matter the hauler is going to set you back an additional 1.4 million so just stick with the phantom if you want if you don't have much money bay one you are going to want to put your command center in bay two you're going to want to select as a weapon and vehicle workshop which means bay three you don't get to select anything the reason you want the vehicle and weapon workshop is so that you can bring weaponized vehicles in here 
and in interior color just changes the look so do not worry about any of this unless you've got lots of money you're willing to waste now once you own one to call it in you need to come to service vehicles come to mobile operations center and request it now that will spawn in on the map nearby located by i guess this satellite dish kind of icon okay now i'm going to go ahead because i have got a insurgent pickup you need to call where are we pegasus it is a pegasus vehicle come to weaponized here so and select is available for collection right now. the insurgent happy, pickup sir. and that is going to because the pegasus vehicle is going to spawn where pegasus vehicles spawn which aren't right beside you so hang on let me kill out my oppressor and i'll fly over there i'll talk to you once we get over there so here it is here hop inside and now drive this over to where the moc has spawned in so there it is there come around to the back Drive at the back here, press right on your D-pad, this will bring it inside. Well, I got some ideas for this one. And if we upgrade this to weaponized, which I'm not going to do, this will make it a personal vehicle, it will make it the Insurgent Pickup Custom. You can store it in any of your garages then, and you can customize it pretty much the way you've seen how mine was looking, however you choose to do it. So, again, you can bring other vehicles in here like the Vigilante, uh, the, the Deluxo, if you want to buy one of those. The Scramjet, if you want to buy one of those. I'm just going to back out so the mechanic there stops talking to me. Interrupting my train of thought. So I open up the phone here. Some of these vehicles I'm not going to show in this video because this isn't about things that are fun. This is things that you're going to need if you want to make more money even faster. But down the track when you want to have some fun with stuff, the Toreador here, you can customise that in there. Uh, where are we? Scroll down even further. I believe the Menacer is one you can you can customise in there. The Scramjet, the Deluxo, the Stromberg. These are weaponised vehicles that... The Vigilante. Weaponised vehicles that can't really be uh, modified anywhere. The Oppressor, the original... Not the Oppressor Mark II but the original oppressor. You can see this one's got wheels. I will do a separate video later on about vehicles that are fun, which this one will be in, so will the Scramjet. I'm not going to go on talking about these, but if you want to buy any of these vehicles and customise them, either the Workshop in the MOC or the Avenger is the ones you want to do that in. Okay, let's move along to the next one now. Next on this list, I'm going to recommend, more so for those of you on PC, Xbox One, or PS4, and I'm pretty sure I mentioned this uh, in one of my previous episodes anyway, the Power Surge. This is an electric motorbike, and not just the Power Surge, but any fast bike, really. Let's pull up, open up the phone, come into Legendary Motorsports, filter out for motorbikes, so here is the power surge here. This is the one I recommend you pick up, $1.6 million. However, the Shitaro is another good option. This one's really quick as well. And the reason you want to get these, more so for Xbox Series, uh, sorry, Xbox One, PS4, and PC, is for the regular time trial here. Now, I do videos on these each week, and I always say in that video, if you are an Xbox one PC or PS4 to use the power surge that is why I recommend picking up this bike this bike's I love it um, this bike has featured in a video I've done before last year around Christmas time when the snow was in Los Santos this was in my top five vehicles for driving around in the snow because this bike great on tarmac it's just as good off-road and just as good in the snow as well and you're gonna want to do your time trials even during the snow in December, this bike just makes it so much easier. Now, that is the only time of the year for those on PS5 and Xbox Series X and S that I recommend using this one for the regular time trial over the Hakuchu Drag, just because this one does handle in the snow just that little bit better. And it's pretty quick and stop as well. 
It's got pretty good acceleration. I didn't really showcase that well just then, did I? <laughs> but look, this is a fantastic bike. I absolutely love it. And you're going to want a fast bike to do time trials with. And if you don't have HSW upgrades, you're not going to have the Hakuchu drag with the HSW upgrades available. So, yeah, this one definitely for those on PS4, Xbox Series X and Air, uh, sorry, Xbox One and PC. Power Surge, absolutely fantastic bike. Uh, I'm just going to bring it up here and come off road. Where are we? There's a gap in the, there we go, gap in the freeway. That's not the best at hill climbing, unfortunately, but it, it is good off road still. You can see it doesn't feel like I've lost any speed along here, does it? Some vehicles, once you go off the road, you can notice a drop in the speed as opposed to when you're driving on tarmac. Not this one! Whoa! -ho -ho. Where'd you come from, mate? Anyway, highly recommend. Definitely for PC, Xbox One and PS4, but even those on next gen or current gen, I guess we could call it now, can't we? I recommend everybody pick up the Power Surge or any any fast motorbike at all really, but the Power Surge is my pick for the top of all the uh, motorbikes besides the Hakuchu Drag with HSW upgrades. So let's move on to the next thing I recommend you should purchase. The next thing I recommend you purchase is a salvage yard. This business was released with the Chop Shop DLC back in December of 2023, I believe it was. And this is something I don't recommend for players who don't have much money. But once you've got all the other businesses I've recommended and you want something more, a little, little bit more fun to do, this business is rather fun. Now, we have over here at this computer three separate vehicle robberies and these are kind of like mini heists oh, I just need to register as a CEO first before we can come in and there are three vehicles each week that we can buy so you can see here valued between 398,000 down to 245,000 and these take around about half an hour or so to complete and there are five different uh, mini heists I guess you can call them or let's call them vehicle robberies that's what they're called <laughs> There are five different vehicle robberies that you can get. Uh, again, they rotate each week, only three of them pop up. And I do mention in my weekly video which vehicles are available. So this particular week, it's the Pegasi Sorosso, the Ocelot Swinger, and the Dinka Blister Kanjo. But I say as well in that video, I tell you which robberies you need to do for each one of these. And I do have a guide on how to complete the Elite Challenge for each of the five different robberies on my channel. And I will link that down below with everything else I've mentioned. And like these are a lot of fun. And every now, every now and then, maybe once a month, one of these vehicles will be claimable. You steal it and you are able to claim it. And it's only going to cost you $10,000. So let's say, for example, the, the Zorosso was the vehicle this week we could claim. We can't, but let's pretend it was. Rather than selling it for almost $400,000, we can keep this one. If you don't own a document forgery, it'll cost you $20,000. If you do own a document forgery, it'll cost you $10,000. And the fun thing about these uh, claimable vehicles is normally they have some sort of exclusive license plate on it that you can't purchase in the game. The last one that we were able to purchase, I'm pretty sure it was the Fista Neo at the time of me recording this, it was the Fista Neo, and that had the Los Venturas license plate on it, which you can't purchase in the game. The only way to get that particular license plate was for that particular car for that particular week. So this this is yeah, you can get some exclusive goods through here if you're willing to do that. Another way to make money over here is with the tow truck. And I'll quickly show no, I won't quickly show you. I've got a guide on the salvage yard, I'll link that down below, if you're interested you can check that out. You Basically you can take this truck out, uh, you go, if you've done uh, single player and you've done the Tanya missions with Franklin, same kind of deal. You go out onto the map somewhere, pick up a car, tow it back to your auto shop, that'll bring it over here to the lifts. You can do two at a time. Once they have been salvaged you'll be paid uh, they're around between forty and 70000 I think it is. I can't remember off the top of my head. It's in my guide. Check that out. But uh, on top of that, for every few vehicles that you salvage, you've got a wall safe here. You can see I've only got $3,000 in here. That's because I haven't been keeping up on top of this. If you keep on top of this and you do... I believe it's if you do four in one day and then you do... 
one or two tow trucks every. It's in my it's in my guide. I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's if you do one or two every hour or two, it will max out the wall safe at twenty. 24,000, I think it is. 24,000 every in game day. Now, you do need to purchase the upgrade for this one if you like the wall safe upgrade. Come into Maze Bank for closures, filter out for salvage yards. Come to the one I don't own here so I can show you. The wall safe here, I already have purchased it so I can't downgrade anyway, it doesn't matter. The wall safe here is an upgradable, um, optional upgrade rather. You don't need it. If you don't buy this, the um, maximum amount that goes into your wall safe will be 100000 If you do, it's going to be 250000 So all it means, if you are grinding this business out, all it means is you just, if you purchase the wall safe upgrade, you don't need to come in and collect the money as soon as you do if you don't. So that's, yeah, if you want a more in, t in detailed... Um, guide on how this business works check out my guide i will link it down below as well as all of the five vehicle robberies and how to complete the elite challenge i'll link that down below moving on to the next one i recommend oh, i'm in my hangar because the next thing i'm going to recommend you buy is the f-160 raiju come into war stock cash and carry scroll down not too far it's nice close to the top here it is here it has a trade price of 5.1 million dollars i think from memory it's around about 6.5 million if you don't have the trade price unlocked however if you don't own an avenger with the terminal upgrade already for it then don't worry about trying to get the trade price for it because that it's not completely necessary yes it's 1.5 million dollars you're going to be saving but you're going to be spending upwards of four to five million dollars to unlock that trade price and this is one of those that it's not really worth it Get the Avenger and tech, check out the missions there. When you've got lots and lots of money and you're bored, don't do it just to get the trade price for the Raiju. Now, the reason I recommend the Raiju is this makes doing your air freight cargo missions really, really awesome. You log into your laptop up there behind the Raiju upstairs in your office where I showed you before, if you checked out my guide on the hangar, and you just come and jump inside, and we'll head outside. Oh, my... my Warehouse is full here, so I can, my hangar, sorry, is full here, so I can't show you the missions right now. But if you go check out my hangar guide, you'll see what I mean. So you spawn outside in your um, Raiju, you can see your vertical takeoff, nice and quick too. Land again, nice and quick takeoff, go into jet mode, and it takes off really, really fast. And this is, when in jet mode, this is the fastest vehicle in Grand Theft Auto Online. Whether it's by air, whether it's by land, whether it's by sea. Now when you're flying along like this, if you press right on your D-pad, you'll notice down on the map there, my blip is flashing. I'm now in stealth mode. Now I am in an invite-only session as you can see, but if I was in a public lobby, no other player would be able to see me on the map which makes this vehicle very, uh, very uh, sneaky or troll worthy, I guess you could say. You can sneak up on players and absolutely obliterate them. Now, you cannot use weapons while in stealth mode, but let's pretend there was a vehicle down here, a player down here near the um, Maze Bank Arena. I could come down here, pull up into hover, hover mode, right on my D-pad, I have access now to weapons and See, they just blew up that truck. If that was a player, he's absolutely gone. They have uh, the weapons on this vehicle are the explosive MG. MG. It's about to say MGC. I don't know where I got that from. Now they're not as good as the ones in the laser, but they are still pretty good. And I'm not the best shot either with them. You can see I'm absolutely terrible. Actually, missing the. <laughs> All right, there we go. Missing the the NPCs there. So if you ever got me chasing in one of these, don't worry, you're going to be pretty safe. But it also has lock-on missiles as well. And if I turn around here now, I've got a police behind me. Where is he? Over there. There we go, locks on. And I missed him. Missed him again. There we go. And then if you need to get out of here in a hurry, straight into jet mode and you can fly off. 
Now I highly recommend using this vehicle if you are sourcing crates for the hangar and check out my guide on the hangar. I do believe in most of those I used the oppressor in that video actually. But I did show in one of them using the Raiju and if you own the Raiju I highly recommend using it for sourcing for the hangar. This is a great vehicle and definitely if you need to get across the map as well so fast, faster than any other vehicle in the game. So highly recommend if once you've got the money, once you've brought a few other things on this list first, then come and pick up a Raiju. Now the last thing I'm going to recommend that you should buy is a special cargo warehouse. But not just one. You can see here this is my last year's Ditched Filthy Rich series character. I own two. I own a small one here, which can hold 16 crates. I own a medium one here, which can hold... 42 crates. If bring up the map, you can see there are warehouses all over the city that you can buy. But I recommend only buying large ones. Now, the reason I have the small and the medium was I bought these last year. The They were on sale at the time I bought them on the account last year, but I rec highly recommend you buy large ones. And on my main account, I own this one here, $3 million. This one here, $3.2 million. This one here for $1.9 million. This one here for 2.6 million, and this one here for 3.5 million. They can each hold 111 crates. That's a total of 555 crates that you can get. But I highly recommend that this is something you buy. This is more of an end game kind of thing. You'd, <laughs> you want to be buying a lot of the other stuff on this list first before you go buying these. But this, this can make you a lot of money in return. I'll, I will jump back into my main account here. So here I'm at my first of the large warehouses. The reason I recommend five of these and buying the ones I did buy, you can walk up to your staff here, press right on your D-pad and they'll go source a crate for me. This will take 48 minutes and it's completely random as to whether they spring back one, two or three crates. It's going to cost me $7,500 to do it. And I'll just fly over to the next one. I'm not going to cut any of this footage. I'm going to show you just how quickly I can fly, using the Oppressor Mark II, how quickly I can fly between my five warehouses and stock up. Now, each one of these large warehouses is completely full, selling in a solo lobby or invite-only session. Full or normal money, I'll get $2.2 million. If I do it in a full public lobby, where I'm going to have the high demand bonus... I'll get $3.3 million. Now the great thing about this is it does take so long to fill up that I recommend only ever selling when it goes on double money. And the last time these were on double money, I sold all five completely full and made $33.3 million thanks to the high demand bonus. So you can see here, just walk up, right on your D-pad. Now, when you're grinding out all your businesses, you're getting on to make a lot of money, I recommend spawning setting your spawn location in the ls car meet when you first uh, before you log off that way when you first log in you're in the ls car meet and then i go to the very first warehouse i showed you and then i come to each of my warehouses go and pay the staff to source crates call mutt resupply my acid lab go to my arcade, use the master control terminal to, to check on my nightclub and bunker stock as well as if I'm deciding to run MC businesses that week I'll do the same there as well so you can see this hasn't taken very long at all I'm now onto my last warehouse now look you can grind out sourcing these yourself if you want to it does take a long time and it is a big grind that's why I recommend just using the staff and sourcing them passively and then only selling it when it's uh, gone double money so you can see here now last one and what's that taken uh, that's taken less than three minutes to go around all three all five warehouses there so once once you own all five Work that into your grind. Do that first before you go do anything else. And then, like I said, you can sell them for $2.2 million each if you want to do it in an invite-only session. 3.3 if you're willing to risk it in an invite-only session. Or, uh, sorry, if you're willing to risk it in a, in a full public lobby. Or 
you can sell them for 6.6 .6 million with the high demand bonus in a public lobby when they go double money, which is what I do. So look, this video was just to show you things you can purchase with your money that you're making now, with everything that we set up in this series. But you don't have to buy these things, these are just things I recommend you buy now. Of course you can also buy things that you're going to enjoy. If you're into cars, buy some supercars. But just make sure you're grinding out the money because you can so easily have $10 million and blow, and blow it straight away on one stupid thing that's not really going to help you make money. So, but again, it's up to you how you spend your money. I just recommend everything in this video is what I recommend to help you make more money and make money faster uh, because we already have everything set up. If you've been following the series from episode one up until now, you've got everything you need to make millions and millions of dollars in this game. Everything in this video was just to show you basically more things that you can utilize to make more money faster or easier. This wasn't really to show you things that are fun. I can do another video to show you the fun things you can buy in this game and I'll look at doing that in the future. But as for now, that's going to do it. It's going to wrap up our series from the ditch to filthy rich. I hope you've been able to follow along and that you too are now a rich player in this game because it is a struggle if you don't know what you're doing and that's the whole reason I did this video, this series, was to help players out who don't know what they're doing. So if you enjoyed it, please drop a like. If you want to see more GTA content, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.